Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Byung Gung Na from uh, Gyeongsang National University. My major is uh, parasitology and tropical medicine. So actually, I'm working with two different parasites, malaria and uh, pre-living amoeba. Maybe you already uh, recognize what is pre-living amoeba. Actually, uh, this day, maybe you can saw many news newspaper for neglect of already brain-eating amoeba. So actually, I wanted to I would like to express my deep appreciation to IPK to invite me to here and have a, I'm very happy to have a nice chance to talk my uh, presentation here. So actually I thought what topic is best here, but actually in the case of Negolera Bowlery, actually I work with basic study, for example, develop some drug candidate from the natural compound. So I think that is not a good idea here. So I select uh, the international collaboration network uh, system I am working now and uh, wanted to talk about a uh, brief uh, topic for population genetic structure of malaria parasite circulating in Southeast Asia countries. Okay, if so, uh, let me move uh, to the my talk today. So actually, as I said to you, I'm working on malaria. Uh, I'm working on, uh, I'm operating on international collaboration network for malaria uh, from 2006, and some of the part uh, will be presented here. As you know, uh, malaria is an acute febrile illness. Ill Febrile illness caused by plasmodium parasite transmitted by female mosquito, uh, female and mosquitoes. Actually, basically, malaria is a preventable and curable disease, but malaria is still a big problem in the world. Malaria was endemic globally for a long time. So, however, the transmission uh, have declined recently, last few decades, but actually malaria is still endemic in many tropical and subtropical countries, even temperate zones, including Korea. Based on, uh, based on World Malaria Report 2022 from WHO, uh, the transmission of malaria caused 247 million malaria cases and 625,000 deaths in 2021. Malaria is endemic in 84 countries and the population and risk is still high. The recent emerging of genotic malaria, plasmodium norsi, and the spreading of anti-malarial anti -malarial drug resistance strains are significant concern for malaria elimination. So people sperm strain having PFHRP2 and PFHRP3 deletions is also a great challenge to malaria elimination. WHO and many malaria endemic countries aimed to eliminate malaria by 2030, uh, similar pattern. But actually, uh, COVID-19 and the other many factors uh, made, up, made up tackle by 40%. So maybe the elimination of the malaria, maybe we need some more time. As you know, uh, Human infection of malaria caused by five species of malaria parasite, Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium malariae, and Plasmodium ovale, and Plasmodium norsi. When the parasite into the human host, the parasite uh, transforms diverse shape in human, human uh, host, and then they induce a clinical symptom, sometimes fatal. Climate change may cause many changes in our life. And malaria, spread of malaria, is no exception. Many studies predict the increase of global malaria transmission by expanding the distribution of mosquito vectors. Therefore, the development of the effective measure to control malaria is urgently required. However, we are facing a significant challenge 
in combating malaria. An effective malaria vaccine has not yet been developed. The most advanced vaccine, uh, RSTS and AS10, has been developed, but its effectiveness is still controversial. Immersing and spreading of anti-malarial drug resistance is also a great concern, especially in Southeast Asia countries. Vector resistance to uh, intexicide is also a big hurdle to if poor effective control of malaria. These changes are attributed to genetic variation. Genetic variations in malaria parasite and mosquito vectors. Therefore, continuous monitoring of the genetic variation, uh, genetic structure, and evolutionary aspect of the malaria parasite is very important, especially for the uh, vaccine candidate antigen and uh, drug, and drug resistance genes. Over the last 17 years, my team performed diverse study to understand genetic nature and evolutionary aspect of the malaria parasite circulating in Southeast Asia countries, including Myanmar and Vietnam. To do this, we constructed an international collaboration network and performed collaboration with the Southeast Asia countries. In the case of Myanmar, we started collaboration 2006 and did diverse activities, including field work and, the, uh, sub, and supporting laboratory setup for tropical infectious diseases, including malaria, in the country. However, unfortunately, the network has been temporarily disconnected now because, actually, as you know, the political situation in Myanmar 2022. So, actually, I really hope to. Uh, reconnect them, but actually uh, this is not easy these days. We also started a new collaboration with Vietnam and Malaysia in 2019. And active collaborating for malaria and dengue fever are ongoing. Actually, yesterday my two students, my two graduate students went to Vietnam to do some walk for dengue fever in there, so maybe they will stay there and back to Korea on Sunday morning. Our team also collaborated with India, Pakistan, and Rao PDR for vaccine development and molecular epidemiological, molecular epidemiological study of malaria in the countries. This year, uh, we held an international symposium with the collaborating country to strengthen our collaboration network for tropical infectious diseases in Asia. Actually, more than 50 persons from uh, five collaborating countries and uh, Korean collaborators are, gathering, are gathered in Jinju, uh, Gyeongsang National University, and we did a very nice uh, talk and discussion about, uh, about the malaria and dengue fever, some other diseases in, South, uh, in Asia countries. Now, we have networked with many Asian countries, including Southeast and West Asia, and expanding collaboration with other countries in Asia, such as Philippines and Cambodia. My wish is to establish a solid and continuous international collaboration network for tropical infectious diseases in Asia in the name of APATIT, Asia Pacific Alliance for Tropical International uh, Infectious Disease. In this network, we can share knowledge on tropical infectious diseases, collaborate for academic purpose, support human resource development in underdeveloped country, and share biomaterials to develop diagnostic, vaccine, and therapeutics. I expect this effort could contribute effective control and elimination of tropical infectious diseases in Asia. Anyway, 
uh, please, let, please let me talk about uh, our previous Pew studies based on the international collaboration uh, with Southeast Asia countries. As you know, Southeast Asia countries represented by the Mekong, Great Mekong subregion have a high burden of malaria. Between 2000, between 2000 and 2021, the GMS countries achieved outstanding performance in malaria control. So as you can see here, the burden is rapidly declined the last two decades. However, malaria is still one of the most important public health problem in the countries. Anti-malarial drug resistance also is a big problem in the country. Actually, the Cambodia was a starting point and spreading to other countries these days. My first talk is the PF MSP1 and PF MSP2 in Myanmar Pipasparum populations. Merozoite surface proteins are multifamily protein identified in plasmodium species. They are typically ex uh, expressed on the surface of the merozoite and sporozoite and play an important role in invasion of the, of the parasite into the host cell, red blood cell. MSPs are highly immunogenic and antibodies against the proteins confer protective immunity, suggesting their potential as a vaccine candidate. However, the genetic diversity of MSPs in clinical isolate is a big hurdle in developing the uh, effective vaccine based on these on the antigens. Therefore, understanding the genetic structure and evolutionary aspect of the proteins is very important. MSP1, MSP2 are the most well studied proteins in plasmodium species. The two proteins are constructed with several different blocks. In the PF MSP1, block 2 is a highly polymorphic region. So based on the sequence of block 2, PF MSP1 can be classified in three different types, MED20 and K1 and RO33. In the case of PF MSP2, uh, it can, the uh, central, uh, central polymorphic region corresponding to block 3 is a highly polymorphic region. The region has been a major position to popula for population genetic analysis. We analyzed change pattern, changing pattern of the genetic diversity of PF MSP1 and PF MSP2 in Myanmar people's sperm population, uh, collected in Mandalay area. Mandalay is the second largest city in Myanmar, actually uh, the center of the Myanmar and old capital was the old capital of the Myanmar. Actually, we, uh, our major field was Pinorin near the Mandalay area. So we collected uh, the blood sample uh, in two different periods, 2004, 2005, and 2013, 2015. Greater genetic heterogeneity was identified in the sample of 2013, 2015, compared to the 2004, 2005 despite the rapid decline of the malaria uh, incidence in Myanmar. As you can see here, uh, in the case of 2004-2005 sample, only two different type K1 and MED20 identified. But in the case of 2013-2015, K1, MED20, and RO33 identified. Moreover, the genetic makeup of the gene was more complex in the sample collected in 2013-2015, so they are resulting in larger number of allele types. This is a summary of the allele type in Myanmar PF MSP1. 
So more diverse type of MPF MS, MS pure nullaries were identified in the sample collected in 2015, uh, 13 to people, uh, 2015, then in compared to 2004-2005. So this suggesting uh, genetic makeup of the gene in the Myanmar Pisciparum population has diverse, diversified in recent years. The right side slide shows that global distribution of PFMSP1 allergies in the global, global isolate. As you can see here, uh, the, this, 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 the distribution of K1, MED20, and RO3 differ by country and continent, suggesting a great genetic diversity of the gene in the global Pipalciparum population. It also suggests that we need to consider the genetic diversity of the uh, antigen when we're developing a vaccine based on this antigen. The PFMSP2 also showed a similar pattern of genetic diversity with PFMSP1 in the Myanmar Pipalciparum population. 22 different allergy was identified in the previous studies, but 59 allergies were identified in recent years, 2013-2015. The LD prod analysis also suggested that Myanmar PFMSP1 and PFMSP2 populations declined across the analyzed region indicating that intragenic recombination could be a contributing factor in the genetic diversity of the Myanmar PFMSP1 and PFMSP2 populations. The Myanmar PFMSP1 and PFMSP2 populations showed high level of genetic diversity and have remarkably diversified in recent years despite the rapid decline of malaria cases in the country. This suggests that Myanmar Pipalciparum population still remains of sufficient size to allow the generation and maintenance of genetic diversity. Similar pattern of genetic diversity was also identified, into, identified in P. vivax population. As you can see here, the type of P. PVMSP1, uh, PVMSP1 are uh, usually classified into three different types, Saron, Bellum, and recombinant type. The prevalence of recombinant type increased in the 2013-2015 PVIVAX population compared to the 2004 population. This also suggested active recombination between the two different types of parasite has occurred. Phylogenetic analysis and haplotype network analysis also suggested the expansion of genetic diversity, genetic heterogeneity of the, in the population. This result also suggested that P. vivax population also, uh, uh, also showed increasing uh, in genetic diversity in the population. Recently, we started the Vietnam Malaria Project to analyze the genetic diversity and population structure of the malaria parasite circulating in Vietnam. Actually, in the case of Vietnam, uh, they also uh, did bad work, so the instance of malaria in Vietnam uh, has also rapidly declined, but the central highland region is uh, still remain a uh, high-risk malaria area in the country. So when we analyzed the uh, P. Pisciparum, P. Bybex uh, collected in this area, uh, actually we analyzed the several genes including PF MSP1, PF AMA1, and PF uh, PVCSP and PV MSP1. Uh, actually, as you can see here, complex netting makeup was ident identified in Vietnamese P. Pisciparum and P. Bybex population. Uh, subst substantial level of multiplicity of infection uh, also have been identified, suggesting significant genetic diversity and polymorphism in P. Pisciparum and P. Bivax population circulating in the Central Highland area. 
Genetic polymorphism and natural selection of apical membrane antigen 1 in Vietnamese P. falciparum also showed substantial level of genetic polymorphism and positive natural selection, as you can see here. So haplotype network analysis also revealed that they are uh, highly, uh, they showed high level of genetic diversity in the populations. Uh, in summary, uh, as you can see here, uh, despite remarkable reduction in the uh, malaria cases in Southeast Asia, uh, the population of malaria parasite in the area is still, uh, this, in this area is increasing in genetic diversity, suggesting that the size of plasmodium, uh, plasmodium population is still sufficient to facilitate the genetic generation and maintenance of genetic diversity. A combination of factors such like uh, accumulated mutation and combination can be the major factor to contribute to genetic diversity of the, uh, in the population. Actually, we also tried many uh, another study, including anti-malarial drug registration gene in Myanmar and Vietnam, but I did not include that uh, the result here, uh, but actually there also uh, increasing pattern of anti malarial drug resistance in the population, especially in Myanmar. Therefore, continuous monitoring of the monitoring analysis to determine the dynamic of the genetic structure in the parasite in the Southeast Asia would be necessary. Okay, I want to thank my lab members and my collaborators in uh, Vietnam and Myanmar. Uh, I also wanted to thank my uh, thanks to NRF and Group PIDR uh, supporting me to this study. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Nai, uh, presenting really comprehensive research on malaria based on the international collaboration work. I know how it might be difficult, so really it's very impressive work. Uh, due to the time construction, I think we could have one question, maybe. Uh, one question? Good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you already asked a question. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> thank you very much for your work. And especially, <clears throat> suppose it was quite um, Challenging now with uh, some countries in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. I have a question concerning the, this, um, how to understand the evolution, mm -hmm. the population genetic structure and, mm -hmm. and genetic evolution of the parasites. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that the, 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 the host, the, the vectors are important in this way? Because we know that there are movement uh, of vector changing, mm -hmm. maybe also the genetics on the population, mm -hmm. genetic structure of the vectors. Do you think the vectors are key player? Right. Actually, I also did some work with mosquito vector, Aedes aegypti, and Anopheles uh, species in Myanmar. Uh, but actually, I'm not a mosquito guy, so I did not continue the work, uh, just do a temporary work, for example, to detect a KDL mutation in the Aegypt, uh, Aegypt, Aedes aegypti. So we, I already published that one a few years ago. Uh, but actually in Vietnam, they also requested me to analyze the genetic uh, KDL mutation in the Anopheles and Aedes, Aedes they collected. But actually, I'm sorry, I do not have enough time to do that now. <laughs> so let's uh, try that sometime, I said to them. But actually, mosquito vector is very important. As, as far as I'm concerned, uh, more than 20, more than 20 species of uh, mosquito transmit uh, malaria in Southeast Asia country. Uh, so uh, maybe if I have some more time or budget to uh, study the mosquito vector, uh, maybe I can try that one sometime. Thank you for a great answer. Yes, uh, so we're expecting more <laughs> vector-based study yeah. <laughs> later on. Thank you, Professor Nang. Thank you.